major institutions that we rely on. Um, this is peeling back a curtain that we have never seen done before at this level of granularity. Edward Snowden, once a key figure in unveiling government secrets, mysteriously vanished, sparking numerous conspiracy theories about what really happened to him. Now, he's resurfaced with crucial information about the potential of alien existence and hidden extraterrestrial truths. What did Snowden uncover during his disappearance? Are we on the brink of a revelation that could change our understanding of the universe? Join us in exploring the truth behind Snowden's disappearance and the alien mysteries he has exposed. Edward Snowden is no stranger to exposing government secrets, as he is infamous for leaking classified government secrets to the public before. Following his government leak, Snowden mysteriously disappeared off the face of the earth, leaving no trace or information of his whereabouts behind. However, he has recently re-emerged and brought more government secrets to light that will change how we view extraterrestrial life. Edward Snowden's story begins in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, where he was born on June 21, 1983. Early on, his family moved to Central Maryland, near the National Security Agency headquarters at Fort Meade. This proximity would later prove significant in shaping his career path. Snowden's academic journey was unconventional. He dropped out of high school and intermittently attended a community college between 1999 and 2005. Despite not completing a college degree, Snowden earned a general education development. His lack of formal education did not hinder his exceptional skills with computers, a talent that would become a cornerstone of his career. In May 2004, Snowden's path took a turn towards the military when he enlisted in the Army Reserve as a Special Forces candidate. However, his military career was short-lived, as he was discharged just four months later. This setback redirected him back to his strengths in technology. In 2005, Snowden's technical aptitude landed him a job as a security guard at the Center for Advanced Study of Language, a research facility affiliated with the National Security Agency and part of the University of Maryland. This position was the first step in his journey into the world of intelligence and security. Snowden's innate talent with computers caught the attention of the Central Intelligence Agency, leading to his employment there in 2006. With a top-secret clearance, he was stationed in Geneva by 2007, working as a network security technician under a diplomatic cover. Snowden's transition to the National Security Agency came in 2009, where he worked as a private contractor for companies like Dell and Booz Allen Hamilton. It was during this period that Snowden began to collect information on various secret National Security Agency activities. He grew increasingly concerned about the breadth and depth of the surveillance programs he encountered, believing them to be overly invasive. Snowden's growing unease about the NSA's practices led him to a crucial decision. He saw firsthand the extent of the government's surveillance capabilities, which included tracking vast amounts of digital communication worldwide. This realization was jarring for Snowden, who had always deeply respected individual privacy and civil liberties. In his role at the NSA, Snowden had access to top-secret documents that detailed these surveillance activities. He began gathering evidence of what he viewed as widespread privacy violations. Snowden believed that the public had the right to know about these government operations, which he thought were intrusive and potentially unconstitutional. He also uncovered information about global intelligence alliances known as the Five Eyes, involving the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. These alliances allowed for the sharing of surveillance data among these countries, further expanding the scope of his disclosures. When Snowden decided to leak this information, he knew the risks involved. He was aware that this could lead to severe legal consequences and potentially endanger his freedom. However, Snowden felt that the public's right to know outweighed these personal risks. Snowden's decision to leak classified information was not made lightly. In May 2013, he requested medical leave and traveled to Hong Kong. There, he conducted a series of interviews with journalists from The Guardian, 
revealing the existence of extensive surveillance programs like the planning tool for resource integration, synchronization, and management. These programs, he revealed, allowed the National Security Agency, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and Britain's Government Communications Headquarters direct access to data from major internet companies. On June 9, 2013, Snowden chose to reveal his identity, stating his belief that he had done nothing wrong. His disclosures brought to light the far-reaching nature of governmental surveillance and sparked a global debate on privacy, security, and the ethics of whistleblowing. Snowden's actions impacted everyone worldwide, leading to public outcry and calling for greater transparency and reform in surveillance laws. It forced governments and intelligence agencies to address the balance between national security and individual privacy rights. In the United States, this led to policy changes, including modifying the USA Patriot Act and introducing the USA Freedom Act in 2015, which aimed to limit the NSA's ability to collect bulk telephony metadata. Internationally, Snowden's revelations strained diplomatic relations, particularly between the United States and its European allies. Countries like Germany and Brazil, whose leaders were allegedly spied on, expressed strong disapproval and demanded explanations from the US government. However, the sudden disappearance of Edward Snowden, following his revelations of the National Security Agency's secret surveillance programs, was a turning point that captivated the world. Snowden had leaked classified documents that unveiled the National Security Agency's extensive spying activities, both domestically and internationally. This act of whistleblowing was met with a wide array of public reactions, ranging from admiration and support to outrage, and calls for prosecution. Many were left wondering where this mysterious figure had disappeared off to, and what other secrets did he have saved up his sleeve. However, these questions were shortly answered when Snowden reappeared in the public eye with a shocking announcement. In a stunning twist upon his sudden reappearance, Edward Snowden, once primarily known for his whistleblowing on government surveillance, brought forth a series of astonishing claims about extraterrestrial life and government involvement with aliens. These revelations, if true, would drastically reshape our understanding of life beyond Earth and the extent of human interaction with it. Snowden, leveraging his access to some of the most classified information during his tenure at the NSA, has spoken about the possibility of alien life existing, saying that the government's being in contact with aliens could be a reasonable assumption since his revelations about government surveillance showed how agencies like the National Security Agency have far-reaching capabilities already. Typically, the scientific community has approached the subject of aliens with skepticism and a demand for empirical evidence. Snowden's assertions, however, paint a picture of a reality far more complex and intertwined with extraterrestrial intelligence than previously imagined. The implications of Snowden's alien theories are profound. Suppose governments have indeed been in contact with extraterrestrial beings, in that case, this raises numerous questions about the nature of these interactions, the technology involved, and the reasons behind keeping such monumental information secret from the public. It also opens up debates about the ethical considerations of such contact, the potential benefits and risks of alien technology, and the impact on global policies and security. Moreover, Snowden's revelations could lead to a paradigm shift in how humanity perceives itself. The acknowledgement of intelligent, extraterrestrial life would expand our understanding of the universe and also challenge our philosophical, religious, and scientific beliefs. However, without concrete evidence, these claims remain in the realm of speculation. The truth of Snowden's alien theories would depend on the presentation of undeniable proof something that the scientific community and the public at large would scrutinize intensely. Edward Snowden is far from the only popular public figure who has brought up the existence of aliens. Renowned figures like Carl Sagan, Stephen Hawking, and Elon Musk have also said a lot on the subject. A world-renowned astrophysicist 
Stephen Hawking expressed concerns about the potential risks of contacting alien life. He believed that if aliens visited Earth, the outcome might be similar to when Columbus landed in America, which was disastrous for Native Americans. Hawking used this historical analogy to suggest that if they exist and are more advanced than us, extraterrestrial beings might not view humanity kindly. He worried that aliens could potentially plunder Earth's resources and harm or even destroy human civilization. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX and Tesla, has also weighed in on the topic of extraterrestrial life, though in a different context. Musk is known for his ambitions to colonize Mars and his interest in space exploration. It's known that Musk, like Hawking, has expressed concerns about the government potentially hiding information from the public about being in contact with extraterrestrial life already, a concern that Edward Snowden has also emphasized. Carl Sagan, a revered astronomer and science communicator, has also made significant contributions to the discussion of extraterrestrial life and the possibility of communicating with alien civilizations. In his science fiction novel, Contact, Sagan talked about the complexities and potential methods of establishing communication with aliens. He explored the idea that such communication would require a universal language, perhaps based in mathematics and science, which could be understood by vastly different civilizations within our shared universe. Sagan's views extended beyond the technical aspects of communication with extraterrestrial beings. He believed that an encounter or communication with an alien race would have profound implications for humanity. In Contact, he suggested that the discovery of extraterrestrial life could lead to a transformation in human society, possibly reducing nationalistic and sectarian conflicts on Earth. The realization of our place in the vast universe could foster a sense of unity and shared destiny among the human species, prompting us to reassess our internal conflicts and prejudices. Furthermore, Sagan was an advocate for the peaceful exploration of space. He assembled the first physical messages sent into space, the Pioneer Plaque and the Voyager Golden Record. These were universal messages that could potentially be understood by any extraterrestrial intelligence that might encounter them. His work in this field highlighted his belief in the importance of understanding our place in the universe and the potential for life beyond Earth. Sagan's ideas about extraterrestrial life and communication resonate with the concept of the overview effect experienced by astronauts who view Earth from space. Few contributions towards theories of alien life have been as significant as Frank Drake's. Best known for formulating the Drake equation, Drake pioneered a method to estimate the number of active, communicative extraterrestrial civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. This equation, conceived in 1961, has since become a cornerstone in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. The Drake equation compiles several variables to calculate an estimated number of civilizations that might exist and be capable of communicating across the cosmos. These variables include the rate of formation of stars suitable for the development of intelligent life, the fraction of those stars with planetary systems, the number of planets per solar system with an environment suitable for life, and the fraction of planets where intelligent life actually develops. The equation also considers the fraction of civilizations that develop technology for communication and the length of time such civilizations release detectable signals into space. While the equation's variables have many uncertainties and is the subject of much debate, its true value lies in framing the discussion about extraterrestrial life in a scientific context. It transforms the question of extraterrestrial life from a realm of speculation to a more quantifiable scientific inquiry. Drake's work has inspired generations of astronomers, encouraging a more systematic approach to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence efforts. The fascination with UFOs and aliens is fueled by numerous sightings, each unique in its circumstances and impact. One of the most infamous is the Roswell Incident of 1947, where rancher William Brazel discovered mysterious debris in New Mexico. Initially reported as a crashed weather balloon, it was later revealed to be part of a secret project 
Project Mogul. The enduring mystery and intrigue surrounding Roswell have transformed the town into a UFO tourism hotspot. Another significant sighting occurred in Rendlesham Forest, England in 1980. Dubbed Britain's Roswell, this event involved multiple reports of unexplained lights and a metallic triangular object observed by credible witnesses, including Air Force personnel. The detailed and consistent accounts have made the Rendlesham Forest incident one of the most well-documented UFO encounters in history. In 1951, the Lubbock Light sighting in Texas added to the growing list of mysterious occurrences. Here, science professors and other witnesses observed peculiar light formations in the sky. These lights, described as dull, glowing, and bluish-green, formed a V-shape and moved at a speed that seemed too advanced for any known bird species. The Belgian UFO wave from 1989 to 1990 further exemplifies the global nature of UFO phenomena. Over a span of several months, thousands in Belgium reported seeing large, triangular objects in the sky. One of the most compelling aspects of this wave was the involvement of a military fighter pilot who attempted to chase the objects, showing the seriousness with which these sightings were regarded. A more recent and highly credible incident is the USS Nimitz encounter in 2004 off the coast of San Diego. Here, fighter jets from the aircraft carrier USS Nimitz encountered a white, tic-tac-shaped object exhibiting extraordinary aerial capabilities. This encounter is among the most analyzed and discussed in modern times, reigniting interest and debate in the possibility of advanced, unexplained aerial phenomena. Together, these incidents contribute to the ongoing conversation and debate about the existence of extraterrestrial life and unidentified flying objects, leaving open the tantalizing question of what lies beyond our current understanding. In the world of extraterrestrial theories and space phenomena, the case of Oumuamua, a peculiar asteroid, stands out. In 2017, the astronomical community was abuzz with excitement over the discovery of an object unlike any seen before. Named Oumuamua, a Hawaiian term meaning scout or messenger, this object was first spotted by the Panstar Swan Telescope in Hawaii. Its discovery marked a significant moment in space observation. Oumuamua was the first known interstellar object to pass through our solar system. What made Oumuamua particularly intriguing was its unusual shape and motion. Initially, it was classified as a comet, but its lack of a cometary tail quickly led to a reclassification as an asteroid. However, further analysis revealed that it didn't behave like typical asteroids or comets in our solar system. Oumuamua was unusually elongated, about 800 meters long and only 80 meters wide tumbling through space more like a piece of debris than a celestial body formed in our solar system. One of the most striking features of Oumuamua was its acceleration as it passed through our solar system, which wasn't solely due to gravitational forces. This led to various speculations, including one by the astronomer Avi Loeb, who suggested that it could be an artificial object, possibly a probe sent by an extraterrestrial civilization. Despite numerous theories, the true nature of Oumuamua remains a mystery. Its brief visit didn't allow scientists enough time for detailed study, and it has since left our solar system. Avi Loeb, a renowned astronomer and former chair of the astronomy department at Harvard University, introduced a theory that sparked widespread debate in the scientific community. He proposed that Oumuamua might not be just an asteroid, but could be debris from alien technology or a crashed spacecraft. This theory, while intriguing, was met with skepticism from many in the scientific world, with some considering it an affront to rigorous scientific inquiry. In contrast to Loeb's hypothesis, a team of astronomers from Arizona State University published research in March 2021, suggesting that Oumuamua is likely a nitrogen iceberg that broke off from a Pluto-like planet in a distant star system. This explanation, they argue, 
accounts for the object's reflective properties and unusual trajectory. Loeb, however, countered this by arguing that such a chunk would require formation on a planet with an exceptionally high density, leaving room for continued debate and speculation about the true nature of Oumuamua. Adding another layer to the discussion of mysterious space phenomena is the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Established by the Department of Defense in 2007, the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program's mission was to investigate hard-to-understand space-related events, often involving fast-moving, unidentified aircraft. The Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program was a secret initiative, much of its work shrouded in secrecy, fueling speculation about its findings and operations. Its main objective was to analyze and understand the nature of various unidentified aerial phenomena, particularly those observed by military personnel. The program's research included evaluating potential threats posed by these unidentified aerial phenomena to national security, assessing their advanced technological capabilities, and attempting to determine their origin. Additionally, the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program worked in collaboration with other government agencies and private contractors to gather and analyze data. The program's existence, confirmed years after its inception, was evidence of the government's interest in and acknowledgement of aerial phenomena that defy conventional explanations. The revelation of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program's existence sparked a renewed public interest in UFOs, leading to calls for greater transparency from the government regarding its knowledge and findings on these mysterious sightings. Together, Loeb's controversial theory about Oumuamua and the revelations about the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program illustrate the ongoing, complex dialogue between established scientific understanding and the exploration of unconventional hypotheses, as well as the government's secrecies around possibly being in contact with aliens, extraterrestrial communication, if truly possible, relies heavily on radios. In its quest for signals from intelligent civilizations, the search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute heavily relies on Earth's massive radio telescopes, these telescopes are tuned to detect narrow-band communications, distinct signals that cut through the cacophony of natural radio noise produced by various cosmic and earthly sources. The uniqueness of such signals lies in their artificial origin, setting them apart from the natural background noise. Lucian Walkowicz, an astronomer at the Adler Planetarium, talks about the uncertainty and potential risks involved in actively messaging extraterrestrial civilizations. While reaching out could accelerate our progress towards a better quality of life on Earth, it also bears the risk of exposing us to civilizations that may not have our best interests at heart. This complication presents a significant ethical and strategic dilemma in the field of astrocommunication. Fueling this debate is the Breakthrough Initiatives, a project funded by Russian billionaire Yuri Milner. The initiative's ambitious Breakthrough Message program aims to crowdsource ideas globally for crafting a message to extraterrestrial beings. This project also goes into the technical aspects of how to send such messages. Factors like the choice between radio or laser transmitters, ensuring high fidelity of the message to prevent distortion by the interstellar medium, and deciding on the light wavelengths or spectrum for the message are crucial considerations. The technicalities extend to how often and how many times the message should be sent. Philip Lubin, from the University of California, Santa Barbara, contributes to this field with his research on a laser array capable of broadcasting signals across the observable universe. Lubin's work focuses on using directed energy for both propulsion of small spacecrafts and potential communication with other civilizations. His research suggests that using powerful lasers, it might be possible to send messages across vast distances in space more effectively than traditional radio transmissions. This method could significantly reduce the time it takes for a message to travel between stars, potentially opening up new possibilities for interstellar communication. Furthermore, Lubin's approach 
could help in the development of tiny, laser-propelled space probes designed to travel to nearby star systems, a concept that's also being explored under the Breakthrough Starshot initiative. Simultaneously, the Breakthrough Listen project, with a budget of $100 million, is dedicated to searching for signs of life in nearby star systems and exoplanets. This project, one of the largest ever searches for extraterrestrial intelligence, uses some of the world's most powerful telescopes to scan the skies for signals from alien civilizations. The initiative is equipped with advanced technology to capture even the faintest signals, potentially indicating intelligent life. It collaborates with renowned observatories, including the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia and the Parks Observatory in Australia, harnessing their capabilities to observe a wide range of frequencies. It aims to cover 10 times more sky than previous searches and scan at least five times more of the radio spectrum a hundred times faster. Breakthrough. Listen searches for radio emissions and looks for laser transmissions, which, as suggested by Lubin's research, could be a method of communication used by advanced extraterrestrial societies. Edward Snowden's story has sparked global debates about government surveillance and opened new conversations about extraterrestrial life. As we ponder Snowden's latest alien theories, we're left to wonder, what truths about our universe might still be out there? And how might Snowden's revelations change our future understanding of life beyond Earth? The answers for now remain as elusive as the mysteries themselves. Thanks for exploring with us on Beyond Discovery. If you enjoyed these revelations, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen. It's unbelievable.